Hello everybody, welcome back to another Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2021 tutorial. In this one, I'm going to show you how to do color transitions. I was asked by one of my uh, viewers to do a sepia to color transition and a color to sepia transition. So I'm going to show you both of those, but please keep in mind at the outset that it doesn't have to be sepia. This could be black and white to color. It can be color to something else. All of this will work. We're just going to use sepia for this demonstration. Okay, so let me show you what I'm talking about here. I've got a pup, I got a video of a puppy dog, some stock footage, and I'm going to transition from color to sepia. And I'm going to show you how it's done. So if I just hit spacebar here over two seconds, it went from color into sepia, and it was a gradual change. This was not an abrupt change, which is what we're looking for. It's a transition. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to do this front to back. I'm going to delete this so we start from scratch. I'm going to delete the adjustment layer. I'm going to delete that. And there we go. Let's see what we got. Yep, we got a puppy dog sitting in the grass. Perfect. Okay, step by step. The first step is you want to go down here to the new item option here in your project panel. There is a chance that you don't see it. If this is if your toolbar or if your panels aren't arranged the way mine are, you might not see it like you can see here. So you want to pull this out so that you'll be able to see new item. It's right here. Click it. Left click new item. You have some options. What we're going to do is work on the adjustment layer. So we're going to left click and create a new adjustment layer. All right. Click OK. The settings will match the footage, which is fine by us. You'll also notice here, you'll see that it's set for one second, and that's not correct. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop the adjustment layer on top to the V2 or Video 2 track. And then I'm going to just click on the outside here and make sure that the adjustment layer for this video is the full length of the video. So it matches the video underneath it. Okay, good. Now we're going to be working on the adjustment layer. Now, the reason why we're doing this is because there's going to be multiple effects applied. And when you're doing multiple effects, I, it's very difficult, sometimes even impossible to um, basically make each effect ramp up and sort of keyframe each effect. If you use an adjustment layer, you can keyframe the layer. It acts like a group. Okay, so here we go. Effects. The first step, the first effect, pardon me, is black and white. So I'm going to go to the effects panel. If you do not see your effects panel, go to window. Make sure there is a check mark beside effects. Under the effects where you see the blinking light, you can search here. And I'm going to type in black and then white. Oops, black space white. When you hit black space white, pardon me, when you type in black and white, you'll see under video effects, image control, black and white. This is the first step towards getting a nice sepia. I'm going to drag and drop that onto the adjustment layer and presto. The video is black and white. And for those of you that are doing a color to black and white transition, keep that in mind. That's all you need to do. The next few steps when I make it, when I change the color to sepia aren't required, but the last bit at the end of the video is. So here we go. That's the first step. The second step is we're going to want to go ahead and tint this. Now, sepia is a tinted color. It's basically the lack of sulfide dioxide or something like that in, in older cameras. But in a nutshell, it's an orangey yellow tint that's applied to the whole video. So we're going to type in under effects. We're going to go for tint and then you're going to see video effects, color correction, Tint. Drag and drop tint onto the adjustment layer. Now, nothing happens, but we're going to go over to the effect controls panel. And you'll see here we've got the black and white, which is great, but we've also got tint. And tint allows us to map our blacks and whites. And this is how you create a sepia effect, by the way. So I'm going to left click on map black to under tint. And then instead of black going to black, we're going to go to a very dark kind of orangey color. And again, this is up to you what kind of sepia color you want. I'm going with a darker one because I want to show you the effect. So I'm going to go nice and dark here, something like this. Okay, 875201 if you're following along. Left click on that. Okay, boom. Now we've got some orange tint. Still doesn't look right, as you can imagine, because we need to map the white color. So instead of, we're going to left click on the white, and instead of mapping white to pure white, we're going to map it to a lesser white. So we're going to go something like this. Okay, and then following along, that's E9, D5, A3. <laughs> Left click on it. Okay, we've got some tint here. 
it's pretty over the top, but it's not too bad. The next thing you need to do is we're going to reduce the amount to tint. Right now it's tinting the whole thing, but we can kind of delete the opacity here. And when you do that, this is, let's say, around 55%. That's not looking too bad. That looks like a pretty believable sepia tint. Okay, good. Keep coming with me. The next step is the video now with the, with the changed colors. The contrast isn't quite there. I think it needs more contrast. I want darker darks and lighter lights. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the effects panel and I'm going to type in contrast. Now, this is an old... I'm going, to I'm going to use auto contrast for this one, but do note that you can go ahead and add your own contrast through brightness and contrast, but I'm using auto contrast just because I want to reduce the amount of time it takes and still show you that it looks pretty darn good. So here we go. I've added contrast so the darks are darker and the lights are better. And that actually selected it a pretty good job. So, all right, so I'm going to blend it a little bit more with the original. Why not? Let's go to 20% blend. Okay, that... Yeah, let's go to 20. Come on, Curtis. Is that what I said? Yes. Now, now we're almost done. <laughs> so we're working with sepia. We're doing sepia to color. We'll do that first. So, no, let's go from color to sepia. So I want to show you the ramp in. Pardon me. So at the beginning, now click on the adjustment layer. Make sure your play hit is at 0, 0, 0. And we're going to go back up here and all the way to the top. And you're going to see opacity under your effects control panel. This is what we need to do. We need to click on the toggle animation or the stopwatch and left click on that. Again, playhead is at the beginning. We're going to reduce the opacity to 0%. So we're going back to the original and it's going to take a few seconds sometimes depending on how, how fast your computer is. So we're back to zero. So we're back to the original footage. And then after I'm going to go with say three seconds. What do you think? Three seconds. Okay. I'm going to go to three seconds. I'm going to step back two frames. At three seconds, I want it to be 100%. So we're creating a three second transition. Okay. Now, this is very CPU intensive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to render from in to out. That means it's just basically going to do the effect, but you'll be able to see it then in real time, as opposed to in stuttery, janky, random time, which is kind of where it is right now. So it's going to take what, five seconds, 10 seconds to do this. So while we're doing this, please keep in mind that if you are going from black and white, all you need to remember is you just don't need to put in the tint. Take the tint out, and this is a sepia to black and white, and a black and white to sepia transition. It's that simple. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to stop talking for a second and let this finish. All right, welcome back. Here we go. So you'll see here, when I hit spacebar, it goes from color to sepia, just like requested. Now, please keep in mind that it doesn't have to go this way. If we want to change it a different way, if we wanted it to go from sepia, or pardon me, from sepia to color, what you do is instead of having the opacity start at 0% and go to 100, you start the opacity at 100%, or whatever your number ends up being, that would be 100%. So we're starting in sepia, and then we would go back to color. So at the three second mark, or wherever we were, yeah, three seconds. We dial forward one more. We would then adjust opacity to zero, and that would give us full color as my computer tries to keep up with me. Um, this is how you do color transitions inside Adobe Premiere Pro. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Ton more stuff coming up. Stay tuned.